thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, to Governor Waltz, congratulations. It was an honor to serve with you over the last six years. And I, I know the Minnesotans were absolutely right in uh, electing you governor. So um, job well done. And Mayor Garcetti, I want to thank you for uh, your bold leadership, really, at the national level on the issue of climate change. And I know your mayor's national climate action agenda has really set a very high bar um, for others to follow in terms of making Los Angeles a leading city globally um, on the issue of, of climate action and climate change. So um, as you know, the state of California has passed legislation to require that beginning in uh, 2029, all new mus buses must be uh, clean, green, zero emission uh, buses. Uh, so my question is a little bit more specific than some of the previous questions, but um, can you tell us what you think Congress and the federal government can do to help you with these goals? And do you think uh, California's law would be a good law nationally as well? Absolutely. Um, you know that uh, half of the world's buses will be electric uh, in the next decade. That's not driven by the United States of America right now, it's driven by China. And they've shown within a year or two of completely electrifying certain cities' bus fleets. The technology is there. I'd like to see this be an American industry because much of the technology on batteries and even some of the vehicles has actually been innovated here even though it's being applied in other countries much more aggressively. Uh, in Metro, the system uh, that uh, uh, I'm a part of in Los Angeles County, we've made that pledge to hopefully by the time the Olympics and Paralympics come back to America in 2028 to be 100 percent electric. We said 2030, but I think we're going to rewind that a couple of years by the time we do this. Where we need federal help is on financing, quite frankly. I've been, I was an electric vehicle driver from 1997. I saved money in my pocket uh, after the first six months, and we know that we can amortize this quickly, but it's a huge infrastructure build on the upfront piece. So what we need is a financing mechanism. This is one place where we don't need just grants, though we'd love to see that in R&D and keep that industry growing here. We could flip probably the entire system in a matter of three or four years, maybe five, because it's America and we move a little slower than other places. Um, but we could do that within half a decade if we had the financing. And so rewarding that, so both the electric grid, the charger infrastructure, and then the loans for the buses, we as an agency would pay that back 100%. I am 100% sure of that. Private companies are offering that to us right now. We'd rather do it, I think, through the federal government because the, the companies may be around or may not be around. Some of them are foreign companies. Some of them are, are domestic. But we would get electric buses uh, in LA in a matter of five years, I think. Thank you for that. And um, another question that I wanted to ask as well is you've been doing a lot of work on workforce development and manufacturing. You've made reference to that uh, earlier in your testimony. Um, can you tell the committee more about these economic development initiatives and how you think they tie into the to our transportation future? Yeah, it's great. I mean, we, we've seen a hollowing out of the middle class in, in much of America and American cities. We see this as kind of the comeback, uh, the, the central pillar of that. When I said there's 787,000 jobs that are created by one measure alone, we didn't want to just say that's going to happen passively. We don't want them to just come from other places. We are now uh, putting our community college district in line to do that training with our unions and some of our uh, contractors. Uh, we're inviting folks. We're starting the first school a high school for kids that will be transportation careers, a public high school in Los Angeles, uh, based on one that was that exists in New York City right now. So we really could see this as not only just expanding that infrastructure, but the human infrastructure and the way we benefit from this. Uh, Congresswoman uh, Bass's um, uh, legislation to hire locally, which I know can be controversial, but you see a subway coming through your area and nobody from your neighborhood working on it. That's a problem. We should be able to reward that, especially in cities where you have the pipeline for just as good workers as anywhere else. We've seen folks who are ex-offenders. I told the story in my State of the City address of a woman who was arrested when she was young for a, a drug charge. She came out. She was trained. She's an African-American woman. There's not many in the building trades. She's now working on the Crenshaw line in, in South Los Angeles, and her son gets to visit mom three blocks from where they live, working and building a great thing that will make her proud for the rest of her life. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And again, thank you for your leadership. And Governor, thank you for yours. And I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. West.